Chapter 37, Unlikely Allies. The deafening cacophony of noise that assaulted Link's ears dragged him painfully back to reality. He shut his eyes, trying to focus on something other than the chorus of shouting. Amongst them, he recognized the distant guttural calls of bubblins, horses neighing shrilly, and an ever-present rumble of passing carts. The noise rattled his throbbing skull, and Link couldn't help but wonder why he felt so ill after being healed. It was worse this time, perhaps because the damage had come so close to killing him. A part of him also wondered whether healing magic took something from him each time he was healed. Ironic. He wondered if someone could actually die from being healed too many times. It was not a comforting thought. He was tied to a pole by his wrists, the cold metal digging uncomfortably into his back. Taking a better look at his surroundings, he saw that he was in a tent. It was sparsely furnished, except for a table. There was a cage perched on top, a glowing ball of light within its small confines. In his disoriented state, it took Link a moment to realize the ethereal light was Navi. The sight of her sent a warm flow of relief through him. He wanted to check to see if she was okay, but trying to twist his hands free of the restraints was impossible. All he succeeded in doing was reopening fresh scabs as the ropes cut into his skin. Gritting his teeth as his hands throbbed anew, he realized that he must have been struggling in his sleep. Sheik was the only other person in the tent. She was bound and secured to a second pole. If the witches were any indication, he dreaded what the Gerudo had in store for both him and Sheik. She looked in no better condition than he was, an ugly cut running across the side of her head where she'd been struck. On her left arm, the sleeve of her odd dark blue exoskeleton was melted, the skin red raw and blistered. It must have hurt, but if she was in pain, Sheik was hiding it well. Are you alright, hero? Sheik asked him. Link didn't realise that he had been staring. Uh, not really. His voice was hoarse, his throat dry. What about you? He glanced meaningfully towards the cut on her forehead. It is nothing to be concerned about, she assured him. My injuries are only minor. Don't suppose there's much chance of some water? Not likely. Great, Link thought. This was a situation that he had dearly hoped never to find himself in. His heart pounded like a trapped bird trying to escape from the confines of his chest. He took a few breaths to calm himself and then perked his head around to have another look at Navi. Was she sleeping? Or was something else wrong with her? Sheik must have noticed the worry on his face, because she added, Navi assures me she is fine. The curse has not began to affect her. Her eyes flickered back to him, concerned. You were in an awful state when the Gerudo brought you in here. Navi told me what one of the witches did to you. Navi stirred from her sleep when she heard Sheik, and quickly jumped up at the sight of Link conscious. Looks like we're all awake now, she said without mirth. Are you okay? I wasn't sure what to expect after... Navi's voice trembled, no doubt as she'd recollected what the witch had done. Link was glad she'd been spared the sight of him convulsively coughing up blood. The mental image this conjured made him feel cold and sick. One of the Gerudo made her stop. It was horrible. He choked, stumbling on the last few words as he remembered the agonizing pain. At least it's over, Navi tried to reassure him. For now... Link's cheeks flushed as he forced back the tears that threatened to come. Becoming so emotional in front of Sheik was embarrassing. He wished he could be more like the Sheikah, appearing to maintain a completely cold and emotionless exterior. It would make his task far more bearable. I don't want to go through that again, he said, swallowing back a sob. I, I, I can't. It seems a futile thought, but sometimes I wish that none of this had ever happened, and keep wishing it were different. Were wondering what I could have done better. Sheik sighed. You are not alone in that, she said, the remorse in her voice catching Link by surprise. All who live through such hardship ponder such things. In the end, what matters is what we do with the time we have. Link blinked back to tears, looking up at Sheik, whose fierce red eyes came level with his own. Why do the goddesses make us suffer like this? It's one thing knowing I can do something. But now, stuck here... He sobbed, as the full weight of the events of the last day came crashing down upon him. I don't want to go through that again. What those witches did to you was evil. It will take time for you to heal, but I know that you will. 
she said quietly, her eyes never wavering from his. Feeling ashamed for becoming so emotional, Link drew a ragged breath. Thanks. That means a lot. Be strong, Link. Please don't give up on me yet. Navi urged him, her face etched with sorrow that was reflected in her pained voice. We'll be in this together. Did you say that one of the Gerudo helped you? She asked. She made them stop. She frowned, her brow furrowed in the rare display of puzzlement. I don't know what happened. Link's voice shuddered as he recalled the pain. Feeling as though his newfound courage had abandoned him, Link found it was an effort not to break down to sobs again. Curious, she murmured. What's curious? Link asked. Either the witch's hold over her was broken, perhaps by Mordico, or their spell is weakening. How does that help us? How does that help us? Link asked heatedly. The sudden anger in his voice caused both Navi and Sheik to stare at him in surprise. He drew a deep breath and lowered his voice. One Gerudo cannot help us escape, and the rest did nothing. I know, Sheik replied evenly. Still, it might explain why they stopped the witch from killing us on sight. Link's curiosity peaked, distracting him from the fear gnawing in his gut. How did you get caught? Imper and I were ambushed on our way to Kakariko by the witches. They are wearing a pendant that blocks another mage's ability to touch the flow. Mariko! Mariko had something that could do that, said Navi. I guessed as much. She may have inadvertently given them the idea, said Sheik. What happened afterward? Link asked. The witches gave chase as we fled to the forest. The last I saw of Impa, she crossed the wards into safety. But she was wounded. You don't think she's dead, do you? Navi breathed. She may still be alive, but of her fate I am uncertain. Sheik's face showed no emotion, but there was a flicker of uncertainty in her eyes. Seeing Sheik's unspoken fear, Link shed an anxious glance with Navi. He couldn't bring himself to believe Impa was dead. I'm sure she's okay, Link said, hoping it was true. If Impa had made it into the woods, there was a chance she could reach the Kukiri, or even the Zora. Any idea how we get out of here, Navi? Link asked, hoping for some comforting words. Without outside help, our chances are slim at best, Navi answered. There's always the, my cellmate is ill, trick. You know, attract the guard's attention and escape when he thinks you're no threat. Sheik was not amused. They would just bring a troop of guards in here and a few healers, and probably knock you out if they were annoyed enough. No guard would be caught dead falling for that. Well, they probably would be dead if they fell for it, Navi joked. Ignoring Navi, Link tugging at his bindings, they cut deeper into his wrists, drawing blood. Just what are you planning to do to get those off? She gasped, watching him. If you're going to attempt to escape, you should at least have a plan. We have to get out of here somehow, Link said through gritted teeth. He continued trying to find a way to loosen his bindings. The Gerudo had not made it easy. There was nothing he could use to try and get loose. I agree. But right now, our best option is to wait for one of the sages or Impa to get the word out. I could live with myself if Ruto was the one who rescued us. Navi told you about that? Link asked, surprised that Sheik knew. Sheik nodded. Yes, I take it Ruto kept the medallion with her? She did, Link replied. Then at least she can tell the sages what has transpired, Sheik replied, sounding as though being stuck in a Gerudo camp was nothing more than a minor inconvenience. Link found her calmness was grating against his nerves, and he gritted his teeth, still fighting with his bond. If only we had some way of getting to the Desert Colossus, we could activate the portal there, and that would be our way out. We have no way to open it, Link pointed out. You said so yourself. Sheik didn't seem phased by this, her face still a mask of calm. We may not be able to use it to travel elsewhere in Hyrule, but... Here, she lowered her voice. Did you ever wonder what Garandorf's phantom was trying to do with Saria when he captured her? Link swallowed, Sheik's words opening the gateway to a host of unwanted memories. Well, yeah I did, he said slowly, looking at the floor. Rauru believes that that temple acts as a portal. A what? Link broke in, surprised, as in the entire temple. How did that even work? Sheik ignored the interruption. Using the medallions, the sages can open a gateway to the temple's counterpart in the Sacred Realm. We think it allowed them to quickly return here in the event of danger. 
From there, Rauru could reach them, and perhaps he could reach us as well. Link was aware of her gaze falling on him, but he didn't meet her eyes. That is why I asked if you wondered why Ganon chose to kidnap your friend. At first, I thought of it because he suspected she was a sage, but that was only part of it. Link was still digesting this information when Navi spoke up. Ganon must have found out, she said softly, sounding a little disturbed. The words sending a chill through Link's veins like tiny threads of ice. He wanted to use Saria as a puppet so he could gain access to the sacred realm. And kill Rauru, Link finished, suppressing a shiver and finally looking into Sheik's red eyes. So once we find the Sage of Spirit, we can use these portals to get into the sacred realm and make our way to one of the other temples? Provided we have the medallion and a sage who can use it. Not much of a plan, he muttered, looking towards the tent flap. We just have to escape and get there. But I can't see any way out. Not unless someone rescues us before... Link trailed off, his final words left unspoken. Even the fear of being handed over to Ganondorf seemed a pale threat in comparison to the torture he'd endured at the witch's sorcery. The pain made even the agony of being possessed by Dart Link seem tolerable. I'm not ready to face Ganondorf yet. I know I'm not. His voice was the barest whisper as he spoke his greatest fear. Both Sheik and Navi stared at him in pity. I've faced him twice now, out in the open, and both times I've been unable to beat him. He laughed without humour. <laughs> I even wept myself the first time. Not exactly what you'd call heroic. The tent fell silent at those words, and Sheik looked away from him. Link. She began in a voice so soft Link struggled to hear her. That's where they're taking us, isn't it? Link demanded, finding the strength to force the words out. To Ganondorf? Sheik still didn't look at him, her face tight, as if she was in pain. He had a feeling that the last words had struck a painful blow. Sheik? He asked, concerned. I do not know, Sheik replied, whispering the words. She turned to look him in the eyes. Was it just his imagination, or were there tears in her eyes? Whatever happens, Link. You must not give up the hope that we will be rescued. Not much chance of that. His thoughts drifted towards Navi's curse. How long will she survive in captivity? How long would it be before the curse started to affect her? He did not even want to think about what might happen, unable to bear the thought of losing her. I have to get her free at least. That would be a lot easier than escaping himself. Navi noticed him staring at her. What's wrong? We have to get Navi free before anything happens, Link said, not wanting to elaborate. Judging from the way she looked at him, her brow furrowed in concern, she understood. Before she could reply, Navi objected. No! I've told you before that I'm not leaving you! There isn't a choice, Navi. You'll die here if you stay too long, Link replied heatedly. Do you really think that Gerudo are just going to ignore an escaped fairy? Navi asked, her voice rising shrilly. What if they torture you again? If it meant saving you, then I could bear it. I'll be fine, Navi. He tried to sound more courageous than he felt. We agreed to stick together. Besides, I can't take my eyes off of you for a second without you trying to get yourself killed. That's not fair, Link retorted, earning a reproachable look from Navi. Besides, you need to get help. Their argument was cut abruptly short when they heard footsteps outside the tent, and Sheik silenced both of them. Then, someone laughed. It was an eerie and unnervingly familiar chuckle that made Link's hair stand on the end. You have met with a terrible fate, haven't you? Halvard, the happy mask salesman, stepped into the tent. He was still wearing that infuriating grin, garbed in his royal blue robes hemmed with a pattern of gold. Nobody returned his smile, but this didn't seem to bother him. Halvard, you have to help us, Link blurted. His heart soared at the sudden change in the circumstance. Navi did not join his enthusiasm. Her face went sour as five Gerudo walked in behind the mask cellar. Link's mind reeled, his heart sinking as the brief ember of hope inside him flickered and died. Harvard was working for Ganondorf. As though thinking along the same lines as Link, Navi let out an indignant screech. You! I knew you couldn't be trusted! You're working for them! Hmm, we have met a terrible fate, it seems. Halvard replied, eyes darting from Link to Sheik and back again. You'll be the one meeting a terrible fate if you don't tell me what you're doing in the middle of a Gerudo camp, Link snarled. His throat hurt terribly, 
and he almost choked. Oh dear, this will not do at all. Halford shook his head, still wearing that almost manic grin. I was hoping that you might be a bit more agreeable, and I do believe that you might need some water. If one of you would be so kind as to fetch some for me. One of the Gerudo gritted her teeth, looking deeply unimpressed, and then nodded to one of her companions, who looked all too happy to be anywhere Halvard wasn't. The lead Gerudo, meanwhile, directed her attention to her companions. You four leave us. Wait outside at your posts. Link noted the Gerudo giving orders was the only one wearing a necklace. He vaguely remembered seeing a Gerudo with a necklace when the witches were torturing him, before he had lost all sense of reality. The witch is dangerous, Avail. It would not be wise to question these two alone, said one woman with a glare towards Sheik. I won't be alone. Wait outside and I will summon you if the need arises. Without further question, Avail's companions left the tent. Navi was right about you, Link growled. If I break free of these bindings, you will not be smiling much longer. That's not helping, Navi warned him as Halvard gave another irritating chuckle. <laughs> oh dear, is he always this unbalanced? Halvard asked Navi, earning a glowering stare from her and Link. This is no way to treat someone who saved your life. Twice? 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 Link could not recall a second time. He has the right to be angry, Sheik said quietly. By siding with the Gerudo, you've betrayed your queen and country. Quiet, witch! Avail snapped her spear towards Sheik's chest. The latter did not even flinch. If you wish to keep your tongue, hold it. Sheik merely looked at Avail with a cold glare. Your words wound me, Sheikah, Halvard replied. His smile was gone for a change. I'm only trying to help you. What makes you think we believe that with her here? Navi asked, gesturing at Avail. Because I have something you own. Halvard reached into a pocket of his blue robe, withdrawing a familiar sea-blue ocarina with a gold band around its mouthpiece. I am not a traitor, nor do I appreciate being called one. Link almost gasped. When he glanced at Sheik, expecting to see some kind of reaction, he was surprised to see her face was still a mask of stone. Had she expected Halvard to retrieve the ocarina? Was she merely feigning ignorance so the Gerudo wouldn't know he'd always been Impa's spy? Give that back! Link struggled against his bindings, a part of him wanting nothing more than to throttle the happy mask man. Sheik shot him a warning look that bade Link to hold his tongue. Oh, I will tell you, but first you must listen. Listen and believe, if you care so much about your queen's beloved Hyrule. What are you talking about? Link demanded feeling more and more infuriated by the man's eccentric demeanor. Halvard's sing-song tone did nothing to help, and Link wanted nothing more than to snatch the ocarina from him. If it hadn't been for the fact he'd met the man, Link would have taken his words for the ramblings of a madman. Will you listen? Halvard asked. Give me a good reason to, Link asked angrily, ignoring Sheik's reproachful gaze. Very well. If you do not hear, then Hyrule will be lost. Destroyed in a flood, a paroxysm of sea, earth, and fire, all your efforts will be for naught. I am no traitor. I am trying to save Hyrule. We shall have to go all in common, do we not? A chill slid down Link's spine as though somebody had shoved snow into the back of his tunic. He shivered, shifting uncomfortably against the pole. He'd heard that, he'd heard that same story mentioned once before, and had taken it as nothing more than Dark Link's attempt to distract him. Had there been some truth to the demon's words? How do you know this? She gasped, her voice hushed. The hero of legend is not the only one destined to traverse the flow of time, Halvard said in that annoying sing-song voice. I had other means at my disposal other than the ocarina, seeing as it requires all the elements of the flow to use it. I can vouch for what he says about the flood, Avail said, speaking for the first time since threatening Sheik. The Gerudo have long known of it. It was written in prophecy. Our own king saw that future played out in the vision he received in the spirit temple. I assure you, Hylian, it is true. Link's mind went numb. Were the goddesses truly so cruel? He looked at Navi for comforting words, but she had none now, having gone rigid with horror. There was a rustle of movement beside the door, and Link gasped as two gangly kukiri came inside. Their appearances were pitiful, gaunt and frail. He felt a surge of anger at the sight of the slave brands on their foreheads and the white tunics of their slavery. 
Both Kikiri gawked at Navi, but a silent nudge in the back by Avail kept them on task. Not a word, Avail said, her voice hard. The two boys nodded, but Link was sure the warning was meant for him. As they unbound his hands, Link caught a glance from Sheik that warned him not to resist. He wasn't stupid. He knew that in trying to escape, he would endanger the two Kikiri. He longed to tell them that he would free them, and that he would escape, that he would rescue them from their captivity, or even speak to them. Link knew he couldn't offer them any comforting words. Even if a veil hadn't forbidden it, his words would be bitter and cold comfort, especially given the fact that he was in no condition to rescue anyone. One of the boys undid his bonds and handed him a cup. They cast a furtive glance at Avail, who was watching them closely, and said nothing. Clasping the cup he was offered in both hands, he sat up straighter against the pole and drank greedily. All the while, Halvard was watching him with calculating eyes. Without another word, the two Kukiri left the tent, their cups in hand. Link waited until he was certain they were out of earshot before he spoke. He had no intention of frightening them with Harvard's grim omens. What you were saying before, Link said slowly, going over what Harvard had said, is that even if I stop Ganondorf, we're doomed anyway? I'm not usually one for pessimism, but I have to agree with Link. Why? Navi asked, sounding distracted. She was glancing between Harvard and the tent flap, her mind no doubt dwelling on the two Kukiri captives. You tried to stop it, didn't you? Sheik's question caught Link by surprise. Her tone was soft, almost sympathetic, as she regarded him with keen interest. There was no trace of Halvard's smile as he nodded gravely. More than once. Each time, I was forced to watch as almost everything I knew was drowned beneath the waves. A strange part of Link felt sorry for the man, even though he had so recently wanted to strangle him. Wait, you're a time traveler? In a manner of speaking, I am. In my Hyrule, after our fair kingdom fell, a demon emerged from another realm, laying waste to the land, or what was left of it. Hyrule was destroyed in a flood after the ancient Ganon defeated it. I found a gateway that could take me back in time, the very same one I told you about. Link didn't recall much of what Harvard had said in the Goron City, but vaguely remembered Gandalf's plan. Seven years I went back. Halvard continued. The gate requires far too much magic to go any further, and I can't get either of you through as it's well guarded. Gaining Ganondorf's trust was the only way to gain access to it. I used the gate to find where the demon came from. I found out, but not before the demon escaped. What do you mean? She gasped. On each occasion that I went back in time, history repeated itself. I was unable to prevent the cataclysm that destroyed our realm. She was silent her eyes distant and far from the small confines of their prison. Before she could say anything, Navi spoke up. Why didn't you tell us any of this before? Would you have believed me if I did? Evel told you I was not lying, and for your Sheikah friend, she can sense deception as can I. No, Link had to admit, he would not have believed the man. Tell me, Sheik, am I lying? Harvard asked. Sheik's expression grew strangely troubled. It unnerved Link as he knew she only wore that expression when something was really wrong. No, you're not. How are we supposed to stop this calamity? Navi asked. I believe the answer lies with your friend here. He gestured at Link, who blinked in surprise, not knowing how he could have had anything to do with the events Halvard mentioned. There was a reason I saved you. I did not find you on that mountain by coincidence. And we thought you were just being nice, Navi said sourly. Do not think me rude, Ferdy. I was trying to help said Halvard. You mean you knew that Link would be injured when Darunia blew up the fire temple? Navi asked. Yes, because it's happened before, and I'm afraid you were not so fortunate in that instance. I also knew that you would need to get inside the water temple to awaken the Sage of Water, so I gave your friend the mask you used to enter it. I knew you could defeat Dark Link, and I knew he would steal the ocarina. My attempts to change the course of time have failed, but I realize that I must include you. Your survival is imperative to stopping this calamity. All the other paths down which time flows lead to disaster. I am certain of this. Was it Majora that caused the flood? She gasped. Who? Who? Link and Navi asked at once, but neither Sheikah paid him any attention. Indeed, that demon was the one. 
But I think it's best not to mention her name. Halvard's face darkened. I was certain her powers could stop Ganondorf. Perhaps they still can. Hey! What are you talking about? Navi squeaked indignantly. Nobody answered her. You told me that demon was dead, Sheik said in a voice that demanded answers. It is, Halvard replied uncomfortably. You helped me defeat it before my last journey back through time. I thought I had stopped the flood at last. Then Majora was resurrected by the Triforce of Power. And as I had already seen on so many occasions, I rolled round. It hurt too much to know that all his efforts would be in vain, that the goddesses were really cruel and callous beings. Or had they not foreseen what Halvard saw? He slumped against the pole, feeling all of the fight and anger leave him. Why did Ganondorf resurrect Majora only to kill it? Navi asked. The Sheikah finally looked at her. Ganon allowed Majora to destroy his enemies. Once the task was finished, it was destroyed. In all this time travel, did you figure out how to stop the flood? Navi inquired, her voice a quiet murmur that was nearly impossible to hear over the din of the camp. Yes, Harvard replied. How? Link asked weakly. The combined power of the sages can stop it. But you still have two to find. One, I can tell you, is imprisoned within the desert Colossus. But as for what awaits you there, I cannot say. Only the Gerudo are permitted to enter by its guardians. The other sage is someone you both know. You must find them soon, or else terrible, dreadful things will happen. I would, Link replied. But I don't suppose you have a way to get us out of here? Not without getting you killed, which is precisely what I have been trying to avoid, Halvard replied matter-of-factly. Let's just say I hope this is the last time I have this conversation with you. Can we, uh, have the ocarina back? Navi asked. No, Avail said sharply. She had been quiet for so long that Link would have jumped if he wasn't restrained. You cannot. Why? Link asked. Avail sighed. I cannot arouse the suspicion of the other Gerudo, or the witches. You are to be taken to the Gerudo Fortress. If you want to reach the Spirit Temple, then I suggest you don't give Kom or Kotake any reason to kill you. Then I suggest you don't give Kom, Kom, and if you do resist, I will tell you right now that the witches will drag one of the Kakiri in here and kill them. I would be hard pressed to stop them. Link felt sickened to his core. He couldn't gauge the Gerudo's thoughts as she kept her emotions well guarded. What kind of sadistic monsters were these witches? His anger surged, and he wanted nothing more than to kill the two hags. They had Arden, almost murdered for ends, and given the chance, they would kill Saria and Mido. I'm sorry, Avail said firmly, lowering her voice so it wouldn't carry. Just do as I say, and I will do what I can to see that no harm comes to either of them or you. Understood? Link nodded, and then dared to ask, What about Sheik? You didn't mention what was in store for her. Avail grimaced before replying, she is to be executed, three days after we arrive at the Gerudo Fortress. Sheik's face went pale, but she said nothing. Were you telling the truth about not having an invisibility mask? Navi asked. We could use one about now. Harvard smiled briefly. I was. Now if you excuse me, I must be off. Harvard turned, striding towards the tent entrance. He had just reached the tent flap when he paused, considered something for a moment, and then turn back around. Wait for my signal. Both of you. What does that mean? Before Link could ask, Halvard turned, and with a swish of his blue robes, he was gone. A veil followed after him without a word. As his mind buzzed, partially from the confusion the whole notion of time travel was subjecting him to, Link turned to Sheik. Her brow was furrowed in thought. Tell me he was lying about the whole time travel thing? He asked. He wasn't. Sheik replied, her voice little more than a grim whisper. Link groaned. He had to get out of here. And soon. We're supposed to trust this man? Navi blurted. He's mad! No, I wouldn't say he's mad. Dangerous, yes, but not crazy, Sheik said to her. This didn't convince Navi at all. He was right about one thing. The only way to get to the Spirit Temple is to let the Gerudo lead us most of the way. This may be our best chance to free the other Kukiri. If we break the curse, the Kududu will no doubt see reason. Sheik was right. This was his best chance of freeing the other Kukiri. With that thought, he resigned himself to waiting.